I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I am super excited to bring you the test that we're going to do today. This, the, FP, the DJI FPV goggles. Okay, fine, right? This, this quad has the DJI FPV system on it, but it also has a TBS Unify. And we're going to fly the same quad with both an analog and a digital. And we're going to see, like, just exactly side by side how they stack up. I can't wait to find out. I can't wait to see how they stack up. <laughs> little background before we do the actual test. We have the digital and the analog system at the same time on the same quad. And immediately, some of you guys are going to ask, hey, wait a minute, isn't that going to taint the results? And the answer is yes, yes, it did taint the results. So in a minute, you're going to see my very first test where there is a small technical glitch, and then we're just going to move on and keep testing the system. There's a lot of good stuff in this video. Please don't tune out just because I got that one aspect wrong. But I do want to let you know I did get the one aspect wrong. Shocker, you can't put an 800 milliwatt TBS Unify transmitting an inch away from the freaking air unit and expect the air unit to work properly. Go figure. I have a video coming out next week where I take this as a learning opportunity and dive deep into how the DJI system it does and does not interfere with analog systems. Look forward to that. But in the meantime, let's get back into this video. Okay, so here we are at the birdhouse at the end of my driveway, and I'm going to fly up this street as far as I feel comfortable going on analog. And as I do this, I want you guys to watch how the analog behaves so that when I then next do the same flight showing you the DJI system, you can sort of have a comparison for how they look. I'm not able to do them at the same time like I wanted to because, as I said, the having the air unit installed right there on the quad next to the Unify screws things up. And in fact, some of that is happening right now. You see those horizontal lines in the video? That's interference from the air unit. Um, I, as I said, I have a video coming out next week exploring that in more depth. Suffice it to say that if you don't put the air unit and the Unify on the exact same quad inches away from each other, the interference is not as bad. Look forward to that video. But you can still sort of tell the difference between the analog breakup and the digital interference. And in fact, right here, this is the worst part where the signal is the weakest. Pay attention to this. You're going to see the exact same thing in a minute on the DJI system and see how they deal with this weak signal in different ways and sort of make a decision which one you think is better. Um, as we come here to the top of the hill, I never fly this far because I'm kind of nervous about crashing on my neighbor's property. Seems like it would be a little rude, but I'm actually shocked at how good the signal got. It was really bad and I would have normally turned back, but since I pushed through it, it actually cleared up. I guess we sort of came over a hill or something. And uh, I know if you're a real long distance pilot, this distance is nothing to be impressed with. But for me, I was like, ooh, I kind of felt like I was really pushing the boundaries. Okay, this is about as far as I got. I turn around, picture's getting pretty sketchy. I'm going to fly back home. You can get a sense of how far I went. And then we're going to do the exact same flight using just the DJI system with the analog video transmitter turned off because, of course, you can't run an 800 milliwatt Unify and a, TV and a DJI Air unit at the same time on the same quad. I really thought you, I would get away with it. I did so much testing, but it didn't work out that way. Okay, here we go. So we're at 27 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds, and 25 megabits per second. We are armed, and here we go. Don't let me down, DJI. 28 milliseconds, 25 megabits per second. I shouldn't just rush down here. No, see, it's fine. 29 milliseconds, 25 megabits per second, zero issue. It was totally the Unify that was doing it. So, um, so I guess there's, let's just fly it around just like we did. Back here is where we're going to see the most breakup, I think. 25 megabits per second still. I can see it getting blocky. We're down to two bars of RSSI. I feel like about two bars is roughly equivalent to standard depth. We're at 33 milliseconds and 11 megabits per second bitrate. Now we're back up to 25. So basically as I fly around the property, we have the best latency and the best bitrate more or less the whole time. And this is just the glorious 
promise of HD FPV right here. The main thing that stands out to me is that when you transition from high resolution to blockiness, it makes it look almost like there's a fog in the distance in the middle ground. So the grass up front of me is like really sharp, but then as we get to the middle distance, the grass is a little bit blockier. That can be a little distracting, but oh, where's my where's my battery voltage? Oh, uh, should I have battery? Oh, I don't have battery voltage in the OSD. All right, anyway, let's go. <gasps> oh, hello. Sorry, I'm. So... I'm still not used to the field of view on these goggles and everything, so let's go down the road, my friends. It's, I see just a little blockiness. I think it's 30 milliseconds, 25 megabits per second. Looking fantastic. Okay, two bars here. We're down to 9 megabits per second and two bars. One bar here. So this is where I'm concerned it's going to... Yeah. So now it's looking, is it, this isn't even worse than analog, even at one bar. Five megabits per second, getting down near the road, in case I drop. I think I saw a stutter. I think I, it still reads 25 millisecond latency, but the picture, no, now we're definitely stuttering. We're definitely stuttering. It's, it's stuttering bad. Still says 30 megabits per, or 30 millisecond latency, but it's stuttering bad. If I pop up, will it come back? I kind of don't want to do that, but I'm gonna. Three megabits per second, two and a half megabits per second. If it locks out, I'm boned. Ten megabit, now it's good again. So as we pop up, it gets good again. We're still reading one bar. There we go, three bars. 50 milliseconds, 25. Now we're back at 25 megabits per second. It's just being close to the ground and the hill and the trees. That was really, I can probably go pretty freaking far now. That I'm up in the sky. God, this looks so good. It looks so good. I really don't want to drop it in these trees, but it just... Oh gosh, I don't have RSSI on my crossfire. It's crossfire. It'll be fine. Two bars now. So now I'm at two bars as I'm out by the ridge. 60 millisecond is kind of jumping around. 15 megabits per second. This is still flat, totally... This is really good. Oh, stutter. I did see two stutters there as I turned. So, how about that? How about that? Wow, oh, it looks so good, though. It looks so good, though. How about that? Jeez. I mean, I just kind of feel like I can go wherever. I do see some jello. I see some jello in it. That's one of the downsides of this system is that your jello in your FPV is also your jello in your HD. There's just, oh, I can see those power lines. Holy crap. See, look at those power lines. You wouldn't see that with analog, would you? Look how clear that is. <gasps> I can see, look how thin that line is. You would totally hit that if you were flying analog. Oh my god. This is just like telepresence on a level that analog doesn't give you. Like, it just feels like you're there in a way that analog doesn't. Analog, you're flying, right, but you're, you're... You're having the experience of flying, but it's sort of through this standard definition lens. It doesn't really feel like you're there. It's not, that's not true, because it does. That's the beauty of FPV, is that it kind of does feel like you're there, but this feels like m more like you're there. I just want to go places and look at the beauty of the freaking world. It's uh, really something. Let's land this guy. Now let's see if we can figure out how to get the... Um... Get over here. The light leak on the goggles, I'm not having a hard time ignoring the light leak. It's there. I wish it weren't there. I got my glasses inside the goggles. It's not uncomfortable. I have relatively small glasses, so look at that. Look how you can see those power lines, though. Boom, they're right there. I've, I've almost flown into those so many times. And I, gosh, now that I'm starting to get a better sense of what happens when it's starting to break up. Oh, it's two bars already. Wow. I feel a little more confident flying. Like, here are at one bar. Okay, but it, we knew it would get low here. We just got to push through and get to the end of the street. We're down to 11 megabits per second. 
Uh, this is totally flyable. It's blocky. The latency is fine. The amount of detail is... I can... Oh, there's a person walking. Okay. No problem. Oh, this is getting pretty sketchy here. Like, I'm... I, oh, oh, this is total... Wow. So blocky. I can see the road, basically. 60 milliseconds. See, the latency bumped up there, and I got harder to find the center of the road. I gotta find... It's gotta clear out here. I don't actually feel 100% safe. There we go. Woo! Wow. Super sketch. Oh, there's another person on the road. Super sketch. I wouldn't want to fly around people like that. I could I could find the center of the road, but... But... Yeah. That was super sketch. Interesting, though, how the detail broke up, but the latency stayed pretty good. I have it set to max... Uh, performance mode. Maybe that's what that means. So you can set it to like max quality or max performance. Maybe it means that it's dropping resolution before it drops latency. That one point though where the latency just jumped. Boom. It went from 30 to 60 and all of a sudden like I was like wallowing in the middle of the road. That's uh, that's significant. But I mean like here can we do this stuff? Heck yeah. I'm not used to, uh, you have to, forgive me, I'm not used to this quad because it's a six inch, I don't fly it except for this test. But we can totally. Latency? No problem. It says 27 milliseconds, I believe it. All right, I'm going to bring it in before I lose my battery. What's the takeaway here? As far as absolute range goes, I feel like... Here's what I want to say. I feel like the effective range of these two systems, the 800 milliwatt analog and the DJI, I feel like they're pretty similar. And I, I, I hesitate a little bit because I haven't really pushed either of these systems to the limits of their range. We know under the right conditions, 800 milliwatt analog will just go a lot further than I went. But looking at the experience that I was having, the amount of image quality, the amount of breakup, and the comfort that I felt pushing past or, or so forth, like the part where the DJI system was totally getting really blocky on the road and I was wavering to stay in the middle of the road, I had no problem doing that on analog. It was a little staticky, but did no problem. And the way that the DJI system skips, I mean, you could notice that and you could go, oh, I'm not going to push through this. I'm going to turn around and come home. The same way that as your analog image starts going to static, you go, mm, I'm going to turn around and come home. But the analog one, I just feel like it's a little... Maybe you'd get... I was going to say it's more predictable, but maybe that's just because I'm more familiar with it. Right? I, I just have so much experience. Maybe as I fly the DJI system more, I would start to know, okay, it, it degrades like this. First you get a few little stutters, then you get... But the thing is, it was at one bar. By the time I'm at one bar, I kind of want to turn around and come home. Like, because zero bars presumably means, bye-bye, you're done. And if it's at one bar and it's down around three megabits per second data rate and I'm getting skippy frames, I don't want to go any further. And I know, because TAC FPV came out here, he flew up and down that ridge all the way on the other side of the ridge on a 600 milliwatt tramp with a rapid fire. So I feel like the effective range of this system is about the same as a high powered analog system. So then, what's, wh how do they compare? Well, obviously, you have brilliant, beautiful, high definition. And I don't think you can actually judge the emotional effect that will have on you until you not just see it, but you fly it. Sorry, that's a, that's a cop-out answer, right? Because, oh, I guess you just better buy it. I guess you can't know. No, but every time, I, I, eventually you'll get used to it. And you'll just be like, this is what it is. And then, oh, no then standard definition will just look like crap and you won't... Oh my god, this is a ratchet. 
I was watching a video where a guy, a high-end a high coffee connoisseur, was talking about high-end coffee. And, and, and he, people in the comments said, you got to watch it, because if you start drinking high-end expensive coffee, suddenly the coffee you drank every other day will taste like crap and you won't want it anymore. This is a ratchet. If you get used to this, suddenly you're not going to want to fly analog anymore ever again. Be careful. But I don't think you can 100% know just how much of an effect this is going to have. The ex even having flown it before, just sitting here looking at the world in beautiful HD, going, oh my god, I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm a bird in the sky. I remember having that experience with standard def and I just am having it all over again. Like, there's all these practical reasons why it doesn't make sense to switch to, to high def. There's all these pra like if I go to an event like IO or Rampage, I can't fly this system. I can't. It would just I can't. But at the same time, the experience of flying it is the changing latency is bad. The changing latency is is bad. I think that the more you push yourself as a pilot, the more that change in latency is going to mess you up. There was a five second window where I was like what 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 just happened to my controls and then I got it back and I adjusted to the 60 millisecond latency and I was okay but if you're trying to do like this wouldn't happen to you when you're racing because there's no obstacles and you're never more than 100 200 whatever feet away but for freestyle like in a bando you go into the concrete building and suddenly boom you're at 60 milliseconds latency right when you need to be most precise that that might be a deal breaker. I don't know. I, more more testing is needed. So there you go. Hope that was helpful. <laughs> Do with that what you will. If you decide that you want to buy this, there are links down in the video description. They are affiliate links. That is one of the ways that I support. This is my full time job. You probably heard that. But if you're new here, especially if you're new here, because hey, DJI guys, hey, coming into the FPV world, welcome. Um, uh, I make a lot of educational content about FPV if you decide to get into it. I hope you find yourself watching a bunch more of my educational videos in case you didn't know. This is my full-time job. I made YouTube my full-time job about a year and a half ago. And one of the ways that you can help support me is by clicking those affiliate links down in the video description. You don't even have to buy this item. Just click that link and shop for whatever you want and I get a small commission. If you buy a big expensive thing like this, I get a bigger commission. But thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to do it. Let me know what you think of all this down in the video, uh, down in the comments, okay? Thanks for watching. Happy flying in glorious HD. <laughs> oh my goodness.